Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Uh, I think I started my 90-day uh, challenge, uh, Korean challenge on the 10th of September, so it's got to be around the 15th day here. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't give, I didn't put up a video yesterday or the day before. Friday was busy. My wife had her operation. I didn't get out to the hockey game because uh, she wasn't released until 1.30. I was there ready to go at 10.30 to take her home and rush off to the game. We lost. As a result, we played in the uh, bronze medal game instead of the gold medal game. We won the bronze medal. We won 8-1. to one. Very proud of ourselves. Um, and most of my Korean activity has consisted of listening as I drive to and from different things. Listening in the car and then reading on link. What has happened is... These wonderful um, podcasts that I discovered with Transcript, they're very interesting because they're very up-to-date on things that are happening in Korea. So I'm listening to discussions, people who are deba debating in a very... I, I kind of like the way the Koreans discuss things, very uh, sort of uh, calm, it seems. Uh, and they talk about, the, for example, the deployment of the anti-missile system in Korea, known as THADD or SAD in Korean. At first I didn't know what this was. I had to look it up in in, uh, in Google, not Google Translate, but Google to find out what, the, what this was. And so I'm learning a lot about Korea. So it's very interesting. So now I'm actually in a situation where I don't want to leave my Korean. Normally I found that I didn't have interesting content. I was easily distracted away to Polish or Russian. Now I'm really getting into this Korean stuff and I understand it when I read it because of course I have my links. I can look up words. Uh, I don't understand so well when I listen to the podcast, but I have a much better sense of how the language works and structures that struck me as strange before that, that even if I knew the words, I couldn't figure out what they were trying to say. Now the language flows quite nicely for me. I've kind of caught up to the rhythm of the language and insofar as structures are concerned, I still have missing words. I still have trouble understanding when I listen, but I'm, I feel definitely that I'm gaining on the language. And I know from experience that if I do enough reading, at some point the, the listening comprehension uh, is going to click in. So I'm very happy with my Korean right now. I feel I'm gaining on it. I've got interesting content uh, and so, but now I have to tear myself away at least briefly because uh, on Wednesday, I'm doing a seminar, a webinar in German. Uh, for a teacher that contacted me and uh, she teaches German teachers. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, language learning and link in German. And I'm going to leave a link to that webinar. If anybody who understands German wants to attend, they can simply join in. It's a, a Adobe Connect uh, platform, but I think there will be room for quite a few people to come and join. So then the, the issue for me is, do I say, because normally if I'm going to be speaking German, which I don't speak, I mean, once or twice a year, I'll maybe spend a day or so listening and linking and, and reading and trying to bring my uh, German up to uh, speed, but I'm reluctant to, vote the, to devote the time to German. I want to stay with my Korean, which is a nice feeling because previously I've always been forcing myself to stay with Korean and when I really wanted to do some other language. Uh, one other thing, someone asked, you know, why do you need so many words? Like my Korean word count is now approaching 36, 37,000 words. Uh, lots of people have uh, eight or 10,000 words and they say they're fluent. Uh, first of all, Korean has a lot of different forms of the same word, so it's possible that uh, people with 8,000 words are talking about word families. That's one thing. And the other thing is, it depends what you want to do with the language. I want to understand these political discussions. I want to understand what's happening in Korea. I want to watch movies. I want to cover a lot of different things. Therefore, I need a lot of words. Uh, if you just want to be able to say some things and have more limited conversations, obviously you don't need so many words. However, as I've said before, I believe the word counted link and the reason why I've said that when I get to 50,000 words in a language, normally I'm, normally I'm under, able to understand quite well. The reason is that using link, in order to get to 40 or 50,000 words, I have to have listened to a lot and read a lot so that the known words count is almost like a milestone of how much time, how much activity I have spent with the language and ultimately language learning is about the amount of time you spend actively engaged with the language and that's why a high word count the way we counted that link is an indication of just how active you've been with the language 
So that's uh, on that score. My wife is fine. For those who asked, the operation went fine. Now she has to take these painkillers for a little while as the pain in the foot uh, gradually subsides. And she's, of course, immobile. I can't put any weight, weight on the foot. She gets around in, with crutches. I do all the cooking. And, uh, but things are fine. All done on the medical system free of charge. And I'm a great believer in universal medical care. Not necessarily that Canada has the most efficient form of it. I think there are better ones in France, I think, where the system is more flexible. But the principle that everyone in the country is covered, I think, is a good one. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye for now.